Hey, Dave Etchells here again from Imaging Resource. I got a real treat for you today. This is the Sony RX100 Mark II. You know, the RX100, the original one, uh, when we had our first Camera of the Year awards back in January of this year, uh, it took first place for compact camera, and now Sony's actually updated it and made some fairly significant improvements. So we'll step through them. Um, externally, there's not a whole lot of difference. Here's the original uh, RX100. And uh, one of the most obvious things is you've got a hot shoe on top now. And it's got an ISO standard hot shoe, but there's also the little contacts inside that uh, make, w make it what Sony calls a multifunction hot shoe, so you can attach things like uh, electronic viewfinders, microphones, etc. Probably the most obvious difference externally is on the back of the camera, the LCD screen now tilts in two directions, so you can shoot over your head or at a low, length, low level without having to lay down on the ground. It's the, actually the very same uh, LCD, which is a very high quality, very high resolution one, uh, but they added the tilt feature. And one thing that's nice too is that adding that didn't really increase the thickness of the camera all that much. It's a slight, maybe a millimeter or two, but uh, still very pocketable. So that's a very welcome addition. Another more subtle difference on the outside of the camera are the connector ports on the end. The RX100 had just a single port that served double duty as a USB and HDMI connection. Now the two functions have been split, so we have a, what they call a multi-connector that I guess can be used for other things besides, uh, um, besides USB, and we have a separate HDMI port. There's an interesting user interface change on the RX100 Mark II as well. The front control ring, you can assign a number of different functions to it, including zoom. And now on the Mark II, you have an option for what they call a step zoom, where basically you can nudge the uh, ring a little bit in one direction or another and step between settings of 28, 35, 50, 70, or 100 millimeters. Another big feature on the Mark II now is that it's added Wi-Fi to the functions. In particular, it has Wi-Fi with the so-called NFC or near field connection option. And basically what that's about, there aren't many devices that support it yet, but the idea is that you can pair the Wi-Fi with your smart device just by touching the two to each other. So you don't have to worry about you know, creating an SSID, a little Wi-Fi node, and connecting to it and setting uh, passwords and that sort of thing. You just touch the two devices to each other and they're paired. Like I said, there's not much out there yet that supports NFC uh, in the smartphone category, but it's definitely a coming technology, and that's so cool to be able to just touch and you're, and you're bonded. In support of the Wi-Fi functions, there's a couple of new menus on the back now, or menu options. There's an entire Wi-Fi menu where you have options like WPS Push. I have no idea what that means. Uh, we haven't even seen a manual for the uh, Mark II yet. Uh, access point settings to log in conventionally. Uh, but then there's also on the playback menu, if I can scroll over there, you can now choose options for sending to the smartphone or sending to the computer. And I've saved the best part for last with the RX100 Mark II, and that's the sensor. The Mark II has a new back illuminated sensor, whereas the original RX100 had just a standard front illuminated one. This is actually the first back illuminated one inch style sensor uh, th that's existed. Uh, Sony's developed it. And this is significant, it's worth talking about a little bit. Some of you may not be familiar with what back illuminated is all about. This illustration uh, explains it slightly. Basically, with it, any sensor, a conventional sensor that's not back illuminated, you have to lose some of the surface area on the sensor for wiring and signals and, and uh, amplifying circuitry and that sort of thing. And that's an unavoidable loss of area that you can't use then for collecting light. So especially as pixels get smaller and smaller, um, that, act, that um, wiring area basically is going to stay the same size, and you very quickly start losing uh, uh, sensitive area on the photodiode. That means you're going to have lower light sensitivity, you're going to have more image noise at higher ISOs. Back illuminated sensors flip the whole thing upside down. Basically, we have that same wiring and circuitry around the pixels, but that's now on the bottom of the chip, and the light actually hits from the back side of the chip. So essentially, all of your surface area of the sensor is available for collecting light now, and that makes it uh, much more sensitive and gives you much lower uh, noise levels. Uh, in the case of the RX100 Mark II sensor, Sony says that there's about 41% more uh, available space on the, on the chip now for collecting light. And in our own tests, that translates into a full one f-stop difference between the original RX100 and the new Mark II. In other words, if you were shooting at ISO 3200 with the original RX100 and then shot at 6400 ISO with the Mark II, the images look very similar. Uh, it's, it's great. It's not a subtle difference. In fact, this might be enough of a difference that some existing RX100 owners will want to upgrade. Uh, it makes a big difference in low light. 
We didn't notice as big a difference on the video, but I want to kind of go back and revisit that. We'll have more information on our review as we as we dig into it a bit further. The video from the Mark II was very smooth, um, but we also felt it was a bit less detailed. So we want to take a look at that and see whether it's a focusing difference or if it's something inherent in the camera. But the big news is the ARX100 Mark II is much more sensitive. It actually goes up to ISO 12800 at a standard ISO range versus 6400 for the original. And there's an expanded ISO as high as 25,600. Uh, faster, it's much cleaner images. It's really, a, it's really a big change. And I think this might even be enough uh, for existing RX100 owners to want to upgrade. We did notice another difference with the RX100 Mark II's images. It was more subtle, but at low ISO levels, we saw that the, they looked a little bit less sharp to us, a little less crisp than those from the original model. And at first we thought there might be a difference with the sensor or with the lens or something like that. But as we looked into it more closely, it turns out the difference is that the default sharpening that the camera applies to its JPEGs is much, uh, much lighter. It's a lighter touch in the Mark II than on the original. Uh, initially you might think, well, that's too bad because it's not going to look as sharp, but it's actually a benefit. Uh, when you have sharp, once you've applied sharpening to an image, uh, you really can't go back. It's, it's, it's in there. If it's a heavy or strong sharpening with a large radius, you're going to lose fine detail. Uh, the Mark II's image, unaltered, is going to look a little bit softer. But the benefit is, is that all that fine detail that could have been lost with the heavier sharpening in the original model is preserved. So you can go into Photoshop, you can set, use unsharp masking, set a very tight radius, um, typically 0.3 or 0.4 pixels, and crank up the uh, percentage, uh, usually 100% or so, or even more. Will give you, it'll bring out tons of detail. Uh, so I think that's another real benefit. Obviously, if you're shooting from RAW and processing RAW images, that doesn't affect you. The, whether the original 100 or the new one, uh, it won't make any difference because there isn't any sharpening applied to the RAW. But for JPEG shooters, I think this is really a, a worthwhile improvement, and I really encourage people not to uh, be, uh, look at it and judge it as being softer because it really isn't. There's actually more detail there than uh, or the original. So there you have it. That's a look at the new Sony RX100 Mark II. It's a very worthwhile upgrade with some, some really significant uh, valuable new features uh, over the original RX100. And remember, the original RX100 was the winner of our first Camera of the Year award for compacts. So Sony's taken a, uh, a really great camera and they've upped the ante for everybody else. Um, and I think there really is enough of a benefit here that existing RX100 owners may in fact want to upgrade.